Alright guys, time to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and welcome back to Rostermania. The first confirmations happened yesterday in what some people are dubbing Coachmania, but also TJ coming out and saying that an old duo from previous seasons is going to be reforming in this Rostermania period. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I greatly appreciate it. I'm already up to the channel, thank you very much indeed for doing that. Just ticked over two thirds of the way to 100,000 subscribers, absolutely beautiful stuff. Let's dive into things then, because of course we very well know that um, pros love to bait during these types of periods. As Sky says, can't wait to see what happens in Rostermania. There are teams changing, apparently. Who would have guessed about that one? This other was kind of funny from Crone, actually, a couple of days ago. The free agents on the side right here for Sky's in the venue. And um, look, I don't know what Mutineers do, because last season, they were linked to getting Hook when um, when Los Angeles Thieves eventually got him. And I mean, Hook and Neptune is an SMG duo. That could be phenomenal. I don't really know what Thieves want to do with Hook, to be honest. Maybe they still want to build around it for next year. That would maybe be sensible. But um, he could go elsewhere. Mutineers could be a target and then you've got to think okay Sky's Awakening did that kind of AR duo really work like none of them were firing at the same time really it was either Awakening was going off and Sky's was struggling or the other way around and it was really Sky's who was performing fantastic towards the end of the season so I imagine that uh, maybe they keep Sky's they keep Neptune they maybe try and bring someone else in not really sure where Awakening goes and um, he could be a big target for some other teams that might be looking for a great flex player so it's um, it's obviously going to be very hectic indeed and um, well it obviously starts off with some coaching talent hitting the market this comes out from Looney, he of course played for the Seattle Surge this past season, so not the greatest situation. He ends up getting benched off the team, and um, now he finds himself in a position where, yeah, okay, probably about time to retire and pursue coaching opportunities. I think he's made it somewhat clear he doesn't want to be an analyst. He'd much prefer to be a coach and um, help a team win, and also, well, have some decision-making power, I guess, in terms of who actually gets onto the organization. So Looney, free agent, where could he potentially go? I think a lot of people with players like this hitting the market as coaches and analysts and stuff like this, we'll have a look at just in a, in a second. Um, there's been some talk, okay, should I optics snap some of these guys up but um i think well maybe analyst is what they need more so and really not necessarily that type of individual but um i think he's obviously like he, he really understands call of duty at a very high level i think he can be a fantastic coach and um, whether he's the best at putting a roster together maybe um well maybe who knows right because obviously last season seattle surge wasn't great but i'm um, not necessarily like he got too much of a choice in the batter i don't really know this comes out from Riven though that i thought was very interesting indeed i'm a free agent for this upcoming season open to any and all opportunities Riven has been kind of a staple of the um the, well the coaching side of things for the last couple of years since he's been doing that over at the New York Subliners so I'm um, very strange that he announced a uh, well free agency right here not clear whether New York dropped him or whether like he decided to leave but um you wouldn't imagine he would just leave the team on his own back but um I guess anything is possible at this point so yeah Revan potentially a free agent well clearly a free agent in the coaching market um definitely someone to look at because he's been around a very long time and seems to do for all accounts a pretty damn good job this of course JP Kress his analyst over at the subliners says now nah, Brian reply so I'm um, well telling him to come back here so I don't know whether this is implying that he actually did leave of his own accord it's uh, somewhat tough to say but um, there has also been some talk on the flank right the fact that maybe Revan and JP should have been more vocal in terms of um, how they well how they coached and analyzed their team last season like did they just let Clayster have his own way like you know these types of things were kind of interesting as a tactics and reply great coach good luck with the new squad kind of implying that um, it's not going to be longer out of the corner until uh, well Revan is back in a team where could that potentially be obviously we do not know thought this is kind of funny as well from Joe Dubsy all right now the season's officially over I wear a medium jersey so one of your franchises you know just let me know what colors I wear next year want to be the 27th coach for us as our season of course um they have quite the talent lineup right now there's no doubt about it now first uh, kind of a uh, well proper chrome bomb type rumor stuff coming out here Intel Call of Duty says London Royal Ravens are likely headed in a full European direction not really a massive surprise to be honest they um they had a very difficult time getting zero out there and nasty even in previous seasons as well to the US and um, therefore okay Paul X came into the team Parasite was in the team right at the start of the season you guys might remember but um Paul X was great when he initially joined this squad he had some fantastic takeover session destroy maps there was a few checkmate controls as well where he was very solid indeed but at the end of the season Afro was clearly the shining star of that team he was fantastic and um you know Paul X maybe he did enough to prove that he deserves a spot somewhere in the league but I can understand London wanting to go down a different route here and um, going back to kind of a UK route because they're probably looking at Toronto and thinking well there's a lot of European COD fans right now that are um, really high 
eye on this Toronto team just because, you know, it's a full European squad. We probably need to do that if we're London to actually get back to um, you know, where we need to be in terms of the, the fan base that we have with Scraps and Waskin, I guess, throughout the Modern Warfare season. But uh, whether any of them will come back, who really knows? So yes, based around Afro should be the target right now. What does the rest of the team look like around Afro? I don't really know. I'd imagine Zero will be there. Like he's certainly been hinting at it on the timeline these last couple of days as we looked at yesterday. Um, the rest of the squad is difficult to say. Nasty is certainly someone to keep your eyes on as well from the European Challenger scene. There's been certainly links between him and London. He was actually signed there, but they couldn't get him out to the States and had to release him. So maybe that's someone to consider. You've also also got to think about like Scraps and Waskin, right? As I just said, guys that played with them in Modern Warfare. Now, um, well, of course, I don't know where they're going to be next season. Scraps has talked about content. Maybe he could come back. I think Scraps and Zero, I mean, they did team with each other back in the FaZe Clan days of um, an even very reserved for a time as well, even though I think if there maybe was some friction there at times. But um, I don't really know. Maybe that's a possibility. But London, probably a full UK route, I would imagine, which is probably the way to go, all things considered, if they want to get back to maybe where they should be. Paul X is tweeting this out with a, well, the eyes emoji and says it's coming in the reply, us right now. So uh, maybe, um, well, maybe he's in a difficult spot or who really knows. It's tough to sell. All these tweets are just so cryptic. This one as well, before we just look at what TJ had to say yesterday. Hi, Ivor, the intelligence of last season. What team am I on? What are you doing in LA? We'll look at later today when, um, when Ludi kind of runs through what roster predictions they have. The Gunless finds himself on Los Angeles. Grill is in their prediction, even though, well, um, I hope the Gunless actually has some solid debates this season. That is all I'll say. But let's throw into this clip from Looney's stream from yesterday. TJ comes out and says, um, I thought it was a pretty interesting clip because he comes out and says, yes, an old duo is reforming from previous seasons. And um, of course, the pros seem somewhat like surprised by this revelation. When TJ initially said it, whether they're acting, whether they already knew this or maybe um, maybe TJ's completely making it up. But just the way the pros are kind of responding to this makes me think that there may be some truth behind it. New duo that used to be an old duo is, ref is being formed. Holy sh**. What? Take, ah, gunless take, and Tej? Like, we got it right that, already. Dashy Dashy and Slasher, Slasher x Dashy. I'm out, guys. Peace. Jesus oh my god. Christ. Jesus. All right, move, move Dashy okay. to LAG. You can't throw Move you... Paul X. All right, this, this is uh, this is gonna. I, I like where this is going, I guess. All right, so we're moving wait, him wait, over wait, here. Wait, wait, wait. You said for Paul X, right? Now we're... Now we're at the troll portion here. Now, of course, even if there is some truth behind this, things can change very quickly indeed in the quality of the landscape and things that may be happening today may not be happening tomorrow. I think that what will largely happen this offseason is it, it kind of does depend to me on what Optic decide to do. If Optic stick, then um, things obviously still will change significantly. But if an Optic player leaves or gets removed or whatever, then that is going to change. Well, it's going to cause a ripple effect through the entire scene. Now, maybe there's the current discussions on what players could potentially team up. Now, an old duo, that could be a number of different players. You see, um, well, they go on to discuss Slasher and Dashy right for the Optic of Los Angeles days. Not sure how likely that is, but it's possible. We've got Clayster and Scump as well, an old-time duo. We've got, um, you know, I guess, Gullis and TJ that Looney kind of throws into the mix there. So there's certainly a lot of players that have teamed with each other in the past that haven't been teaming for a while that could be getting back together. And uh, maybe that more implies like the, the veteran players on some of these top-tier teams. It's tough to say. And um, of course, as we say, none of this may happen at all, but uh, maybe TJ is just baiting all of us. But uh, by some of the reaction, I think that maybe there is something like that in the works the present time, but um, things of course can change very rapidly indeed as Ben J the team kind of shuts down the party to some degree here on Twitter. Contracts exist, Reddit seems to think otherwise, so you mean to tell me everything I hear on Twitter isn't true. That is of course, uh, well, not the case. Everything on Twitter is bang on facts. Just to finish off the video, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. This in regard to Call of Duty Vanguard. Some discussion on to what gamer do we want to be for map 3. So of course, Hardpoint Search and Destroy, that is a no-brainer. The game 3 is tough to say. Back in World War 2 we had CTF, which um, wasn't completely terrible in that game, but wasn't fantastic, I don't think. Gridiron was the other one, which is effectively uplink, but the portal was on the floor. You had to throw it in the floor, like run the ball in. And that almost got it played in competitive, actually, that year. They were kind of, uh, the pros were kind of debating about it early on. Now, will Sledgehammer actually bring back Control? Because we didn't see Control in Modern Warfare, right? We had to play Domination, which would be an absolute disaster. So, hope as long as we don't get Domination, I'm kind of happy. But, um, like, I think Control would be nice to see back. Maybe Sledgehammer have some other ideas. Maybe they are thinking CTF comes back. If they can make the maps okay. And to be fair, if there's 16 6 versus 6 maps, then maybe you can find three of them that are going to work well for CTF. So um, maybe it actually could be okay. Because that's the thing with CTF, it's very difficult generally to find maps that work well for it. Like the spawns have to work really well and the flag locations have to work great so that when you spawn up, you have the decision to make whether you wrap back to your own flag and defend it or whether you overextend and try and pull theirs. And um, in World War II, that wasn't really the case. You generally just spawned on your flag and you could just defend it straight up. And that meant the games were really slow. But all you really need is three good CTF maps and it can work. So maybe CTF, I wouldn't mind 
seeing that uh, with the fact that we do have a lot of maps in the game, which could potentially work. But um, yeah, I guess that is something to be considered. And just to finish off right here, given that, well, obviously some teams are considering changes. Some teams are very much not considering changes. The likes of Atlanta Face, you'd imagine. But pretty much everyone else is potentially in the ballpark for some sort of roster moves with their big name free agents that we imagine could be on the market here over these uh, next couple of weeks. And I thought this was very interesting from CDL Metrics. Power rankings for all the different gamers. So as you can see right here, this is um, Atlanta Phase number one in, well, number one in Arboids, number one in Control, actually number two in Search and Destroy. It was Toronto Ultra, technically the number one team in terms of power rankings for this season in terms of Surge. As you go down the list, though, it does get kind of interesting. I mean, you can look at the bottom real quick. You've got Los Angeles Grillers, actually the sixth best team in Search and Destroy. It's not completely terrible, but at 12th in both of the respawns, which is um, maybe something you might have expected, really, looking at that team right there. Seattle, actually not the worst in Hardpoint, to their credit. But Optic is kind of interesting, right? The fact that they're ninth best in Search and Destroy, second best in Hardpoint, third best in Control, ninth best in Surge. If they were like a number two, a number four, like anything in that ballpark here, it, like honestly, they'd be a top two team in the game. It's the Search and Destroy that seemed to hold them back. And that's what's kind of impressive about Dallas. Fifth best in Control, the third best in it, well, in Hardpoint and Search and Destroy, the two game modes you play um, twice in a series. And that led to them pretty much being a top three team this season. And well, if Minnesota are a bit better at Hardpoint, they maybe could have been much better this season as well. But very much intrigued. Take your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really upset that you should welcome to know you enjoyed this content. A lot of people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've got the competitive corner to the community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.